What's going on everyone? Mike Latenda, this old hot rod. It's snowing out and it sucks. foot already this has already been shoveled out once Get the heat on come down to see how warm it is in the shot Whew. let's get down to the shop it's lunchtime been shoveling on and off all morning hanging out with Allie in the house just kind of watching the snow pile up you know oh you guys if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook you saw this now I'm now I actually wish I had a nicer one on this side. This one's kind of a little crappy. I'm gonna to try to polish it up a little bit. This one's beautiful. So thank you to Greg Free for sending me that. His last name was free. The lens wasn't free. That's okay. The last thing I worked on was the passenger side door. I was having some issues with it closing or latching. Close is fine. Doesn't it wasn't latching that great. One, someone had mentioned you have to shim the body and everything. The body's bolted down. The body's, like the body and the doors have been fine. It wasn't until I welded the structure in where I think something kind of moved a little bit. And you can see the gap. The gaps have been fine all along. Uh, there is a little bit of, there is a little bit of play in the top hinge, but I really don't think that that's the issue. Got a good gap here. I think the issue is just this whole area was dented in. So I think if I were to just shave a little bit off the back of this, where the catch catches, I mean, that's what was, so what I ended up doing was I pulled on this really hard and I tried to pull it out just a little bit and I think it actually did work. Cause it, it shuts and closes now without really needing to slam it. So I'm gonna end up at some point having to run to the metal supply yard and try to get another piece of that box tubing. Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to work on the driver's side until I get that. But what I ended up doing the other night, kind of just, I had a little bit of time to kill before Ali and I got together and went out and for dinner and, and everything was, I didn't videotape it, but I filled this in where the column used to come up, came up, there was a big kind of a radius here, a half circle where the original column came up through. And then it bolted here. This is still not bolted. So what, what, what my thoughts were is originally I wanted to, I wanted to kind of flatten it out, but doing that drops the wheel about three quarters, three quarters of an inch. And it's already hard enough to get into this car. So I thought back in the day, they wouldn't have done that. For the looks they would have simply maybe filled that in they may not even have filled that in they probably would have just done a flat plate right down and around the steering column so what i need to do now is is drill a couple of holes because i ended up moving the column over a little bit previously it was over this way and it was real close to the motor so where the column actually wants to sit on its own it actually gives me quite a bit of clearance between the motor and the steering column so that kind of helps me out. I'm thinking about removing this raised portion here because it's gonna kind of interfere with the aluminum that I want to put on top of the on top of the dash. I use my um, what do you call it? My ram board to make a template. Let me mount the camera. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna fine tune the area where I'm gonna run my beads. I'm debating whether or not to just run the aluminum down to here and end it. I should just almost make like an aluminum insert. It actually may look a little better. Just creep up maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch across the bottom. So you'll still see some of the metal and I'll just screw it or whatever rivet it to the dash 
But this piece here is going to interfere with, with what I want to do. So I've got to actually remove that. I don't know what gauges are gonna go where yet, and I don't wanna to have to worry about the gauges only being attached to this flimsy little piece of aluminum. Well, I don't know how flimsy it'll be once it's attached, I guess. It's nice and smooth now, so that's good. All right, what I'm doing is I'm using just a small bead die, and I'm trying to just roll it roll the metal halfway or basically into the middle of the die just to round this edge over and I'll show you why I'm doing that in a second I've never I've never done what I'm attempting to do so it may work it may not all right so you can see I just tipped that edge with the bead roller a little bit of cleaning up I can do some parts of building a hot rod is just having fun it's all about the experience you know and learning you can't learn what not to do if you if you don't take chances and you do everything right the first time I don't typically do things right the first time. And I'm okay with it. I want to make mistakes. I want to learn. I want people to tell me, hey, there's a better way to do that. And actually tell me how to do it. What do you think? You know, it's hard to tell. You know what? What I'll do is I'll roll, I'll end up pounding this, this, this piece down under here will overhang. I want it to tip underneath the, tip underneath the dash. This edge seemed to flatten out a little bit. All right, let's bring this over to the car and see. Obviously I didn't put a line underneath. I didn't, I didn't run a line on the bottom. I think that adds just a nice subtle detail. What I'm afraid to do is, if I add another bead across the bottom, which I, I kind of shot myself in the foot with the ends, but if I were to add another bead on the bottom, I'm afraid the gauges... You know what? Let's go grab some gauges. I feel like my head's not quite right this morning. And then my gauges... Probably only do three or four gauges, you know? Water temp, charge, and oil pressure. I'm happy with that. I think I'm going to fill this in because it's about what my gauges are going to be and I don't want that to interfere with anything. I'll end up drilling three holes through it, but that's fine. Just using this bead roller die as a spacer. So they'll be a little spaced apart. They're going to look good. I have enough room for two more gauges if I decide to run them. I don't know what I would run. Let's go pop it in the car and see what it's going to look like.
So I have my on off switch here. Suppose I can just use that for ignition. I'd have to fix it. I don't know the first thing about it. I'm gonna need a switch for the fuel pump. Switch, switch for ignition. So that's the center. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe off all the green. I'm gonna move it over. I'm gonna grab my marker, make a mark, find my new center, and then go from there. My new center will be here, so it'll be one, two, and then maybe I'll just do three. Yeah. All right, let's do that. I'm gonna go grab my marker and mark a new center line. Just got done shoveling. Got done shoveling again. We probably got, I'm thinking 14, six, 14, 16 inches of snow maybe. I don't know. Hard to tell because it just keeps blowing around, but this is the third time I've shoveled this. And there's, there's over a foot. We started at about, I don't know, eight, nine o'clock last night. See the snow drifts are pretty bad. Yeah, tree fort and the trampolines in the ground. Dylan's got a big old pile of snow to make a pretty damn good fort in. It's beautiful if you don't have to be outside in there, right? Thank God I got a garage to go into and hide from it. It's my little life hack. I take garden hoses. This is a stone walkway. I take garden hoses, there's actually another one under the other side. I lay them down over the stone and then I just run my shovel on top of the garden hoses. It doesn't dig into the stones. Otherwise, I end up picking up stones off of my lawn all year. When it's a light, when it's a real light snow, just a few inches, you can just take the shovel and it just goes, zzz, just slides down the, slides down the uh, garden hoses. A little something I came up with years ago. I learned it by accident. All right, I'm gonna get back to working on this dash panel. Oh, you know what? I didn't grab the, I didn't grab my hole saws. A bunch of people I know are up out in California this this weekend or this week for the Grand National Roads to show. I went a few years ago. It's kind of a bucket list thing for me. I'd like to go back again at some point, take Allie. All right, I'll get this relay, relayed out with my new center mark. Let's go see what this looks like. The new layout. Hey guys, I just made a quick template. Took my my board, took my marker, followed this outside line, followed the line around the edge. Cut it out with the cut out with a pair of pair of scissors, and now I'm good to go. So, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to fill that in. I'm still not 100% sure I'm going to use that dash, that like filler panel thing I just made. I'm not I'm not 100% in love with it. So what I think I might do for now is at least fill this in, and I know I have another box of gauges up in the top garage. I'm gonna go grab those and then just see what I have for gauges to, to get to get some type of a layout laid out. Get an idea of what or how I want to do it. Get some holes cut. Maybe get some gauges in the dash by the end of the day. That would be pretty cool. I thought putting some aluminum in on the car would I don't know. Kind of clean things up a little bit, make it look like a race car. But I'm not 100% sold, like I said, so. 
Uh, for the time being, I'm just gonna, gonna fill that hole in the dash and then start over, I think. All right, I'm gonna break out the plasma cutter and I'm gonna see how good I can do this. Get it as close as I can and then fine tune it with my grinder or my flap disc. What a great tool. All right, let me uh, clean up the edges where it kind of blobs underneath and fine tune it with my template and see how I can get it to fit. Boy, right out of the box, I think I'm pretty good. I'm, good. I'm pretty close. I think I'll have a little bit of modifying to do on this end, but let me just get it cleaned up real quick. Go check and see. I'm sure I'll have a few modifications to do. The odds of it fitting first try are slim to none, I'd say. So I got this all shaped, shaved down, grounded down real quick with the with the disc. Uh, I'm not really sure how far I'm going to go as far as cleaning the rest of it up. I need that just so I can cut the holes and get the gauges in. <laughs> I felt my leg getting warm. Whoa. I got a lot of trimming to do. <laughs> These were my insulated pants too. What the hell? All right, so I'm just taking my shears and I'm I'm slowly trimming it down to get it to fit. 
So I'm able to trim it down with my shears. I'm just gonna go sit in the car with my shears and my marker and you guys. And we're gonna trim this thing down to fit and see if I can get it to fit a little better than the last one. Okay, here we go. Even just doing that, I'm, I'm not too far off. I'm gonna shape it to the dash. It's gotta be. Again, like I explained to you before, it kind of rolls up, so I think I need to I need to curl the top of this up. So I'm gonna shape it up real quick on the English wheel, see if I can uh, see if I can get it to fit on the dash a little better. Shouldn't take too many passes to get it shaped the way I need it. It's gonna go real slow, really thin aluminum. Get away with a little more pressure because it just sinks into the rubber, the tube on the top of the guy. Right, let's go see how that fits. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna grab my grinder and my flap disc and just clean up the edges real quick down low on the lower edge. What I might do is grab some Scotch Brite and do an engine turn on this. I've never done it before, so I'm, I kind of want to try. All right, so I grab one of these Scotch Brite three inch or two inch two inch Scotch Brite Wizzy wheels. I'm gonna cut it. Right where they glue it, the mount to it.
All right, this is not working now for some reason. It's not working. Making it worse. It's too fancy for this car, I think. Butchery. Pure butchery. Uh, I might be making another one. That's two down. I don't like it. Probably gonna make a third one. I'm pretty upset with myself. I think it kind of looks like crap. Pretty aggravated. I waste my whole day working on this dashboard and I've literally got nothing done. Alright, let's uh... We're gonna go drill some more holes in the dashboard. I already drilled one. I took some self tappers, mounted that piece of aluminum on the dash. You, you know, the one, the one that I screwed up, engine turning. My coke got caught. I ended up just taking my, my little whizzy wheel with a 180 disc on it and just kind of did a ton of circles. It actually doesn't look that bad. I already cut a hole in it. It doesn't look that great, but to be honest with you, I don't hate it. <laughs> and that's a lot to be said after uh, messing with it all day, you know? So I'm just gonna, I'm trying to set these in here. This one doesn't have a mount, so. It's just sitting there temporarily. That's not the gauge that's gonna stay there. I don't even know that I'll use that gauge to be completely honest with you. That's an oil temperature gauge. I feel like a lot of big trucks use them. Get an idea where the next one's gonna go. Water temp. Let's put that one right here. It's gonna space it out a little bit, but I don't think I really want to. That'll be the center. How's it going everyone? Mike with this old hot rod down here in the shop. It's Tuesday afternoon. I actually was working on this this video and realized I didn't film an ending to the video. I spent some time editing the video last night, Sunday and Monday night. And uh, I just wanted to do a wrap up on this video. You guys saw you guys saw what I did with the dashboard. I ended up scrapping my first attempt. I just wasn't happy with it. Probably could have modified it and made it work but I thought at the end of the day it was probably just easier to just make another one and uh, 
I'm happy with the way it came out. The next video is going to be me working on the door panels and the panels on either side of the seat. Those are actually already done. Uh, pretty happy with the way those came out too. Just a, just a fun little project, easy projects like this that make the, the whole process enjoyable. Uh, sometimes, uh, I was talking to my buddy Pete the other day and he's built so many cars that he says he knows he has his exact process that he follows. and uh, Yeah, I just seem to kind of bounce around a little bit, and, which is okay. I mean, I kind of got taken off the car a few times since the building process began. So sometimes it's a little tough to focus on exactly what the next step is after you've been off the car for a little while. But that being said, I'm, I'm happy where the car is at now. It's nice to be back working on the car. Uh, I had planned on dropping the windshield off, the frame off to the glass guy. But we had that big storm and he just, he wasn't able to get into his shop. He typically does things like that on Saturdays and Sundays when he's, when he's kind of stuck in the shop or if it snows a little bit, he'll spend some time in the garage on a Saturday or his glass shop doing little jobs like that, but he wasn't able to get into the shop. So, so at the end of the day, I didn't end up bringing it down to him. So I'm hoping maybe the end of this week, I'll be able to bring the windshield down to him, get some glass put in that and then I can check that off the list too. The next step is gonna to be to work on the headlight bar. And then immediately after that is going to be working on the front floor pans. Um, once those floor pans are done, I'm gonna mount the new gas tank that I got from Dave Mortland Jr. Uh, he, he, a while ago, had, had secured me a gas tank from a friend of his, local to him. And I have that sitting right near the car, so that's gonna be ready to go in, and after that I'll be able to get get to work on plumbing the gas tank. I don't think I'm gonna do much with the brakes until I pull the body off of the chassis, uh, just because it doesn't really make sense to do that. Uh, I need to figure out an exhaust system, so I may just make my own exhaust system, gonna be something pretty simple, just some straight pipes or something similar to that. No mufflers. Um, I'm not going to run a zoomy. I want it to be out behind the car because I want it to be somewhat quiet. Uh, yeah, just going to start picking away at some of those, some of those last remaining items. But I am going to, at the same time, I am going to do little fun projects like the door panels, the dashboard, and just things like that. Things to kind of finish off the car a little bit. I'm going to start pretty soon on metal work. I think what's going to happen with the car is I know I've said all along I'm going to keep it rusty. Uh, but if the, wet, the winter keeps going the way it's going and it stays cold and snowy, I'm probably just going to stay on the car until early spring or or until I feel as though it's done. Um, so I feel what's going to happen is I'm probably going to get into the panel patches, you know, the patch panels and, and a little bit here and there, the panel repair. And I'm probably going to go further than I, than I planned on going originally. Which, if, as long as I have the time, I'm okay with it. Now that the, now that the garage is kind of set up a little bit better, it's, it's not as painful to be down here working on the car. Like I said, I got some room to stretch my legs, I can move things around, I have a lot of the equipment down here that I need now. Uh, a little bit of running back and forth up to the top garage. I think what I'm going to end up doing probably sometime in the spring or summer is moving the remainder of my large tools down here to this garage, which will be my box pan brake, my jump shear, my slip roll. Uh, probably going to spend a little bit of time in the next couple of weeks Maybe in a few videos, uh, you know, in another couple videos, I want to start break out my TIG welder. I ordered a new foot pedal for my TIG welder. Uh, it's a it's a lower model. It is an Eastwood TIG, which then you know there. It it works, but it's not one of the higher end TIG welders. It was something that I bought so I could start learning. Uh, this was four four years ago, three or four years ago. I really don't use it all that much, but. I went and got my bottles filled before this last big snowstorm we had so I could get to work on the on the headlight bar. I wanna I wanna weld the headlight bar with that. I'm a little more comfortable with the thicker metal with the TIG welder. 
Uh, I seem to I seem to run them a little hot and use a little bit too much heat in my welds, and it's something I need to practice. But at the same time, I ordered a new pedal, and that's supposedly one of the one of the fixes for that problem uh, for those particular machines. So, looking forward to getting back into the, just the process of TIG welding. Just like I said, keep picking away at the T. Uh, I'm pretty close at this point now to be able to, to to start getting things taken back apart and painted. So I, I would love to, by the end of February, have the chassis in paint, all the suspension in paint, and uh, just keep chipping away at some of the some of the to-do items on my list. So thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell too at the same time while you're over there it doesn't cost you a penny it's free it helps me as far as a youtuber it shows the youtube it shows youtube or the bots the, the the youtube bots it shows the youtube bots that people are enjoying my videos and they're subscribing so they can see more videos and that tells the youtube bots to promote my videos which is a suggested video so if you guys see you know and you're watching a video and at the end it says hey you like this maybe you'll like this or it'll say this old hot rod viewers also watch such and such a channel that's the bots that's what the bots are doing for youtubers like myself so the more likes the more comments the more shares the more uh, views all of those things factor in with the YouTube bots and it's something that a lot of people just don't really know or understand and it's something that I've, I've learned to you know read up on the analytics and I've kind of figured out and that's something that's why all the youtubers ask all you guys like the chant like this the video subscribe hit the notification bell that's why so it's it's called it's called interaction uh, and the more interaction the channel has the more likely you are to get uh, you know promoted by YouTube so that's my rant. That's my spiel. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, it was a, somewhat of a short video on the dashboard. Hopefully, you guys got a kick out of my flaming pants. Uh, I wasn't expecting that to happen, but it makes sense. Uh, I'll be wearing Dickies probably from now on. I have them. I had been wearing them in the last couple of videos, uh, but I just got in from shoveling. Those were my insulated pants. Uh, they ended up catching fire, so now there's a big old hole in the knee. There already was one. Now it's just bigger. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny, and I just, like I said, I hope you guys get a kick out of that. I hope you guys enjoy the video. So, appreciate everybody following along, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.